Um, now, I was given an MBE for freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and freedom of religion by the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. And guess what my citation was? For the human rights of the first in history for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. I have been supporting transgender people since 1979, yeah, and the first programme. It might have been the repeat in 1980, but give or take. We're talking 40 years, and it was five years before I came out as a lesbian. Yeah? Yeah. And so I have transgender friends in Poland, Hungary, Ukraine. I went all over the Ukraine in 2012. I took rainbow flags to Kharkiv and took them through the streets where they were welcomed. I took a rainbow flag to Donetsk. I could have got myself killed. But no, I had nothing but kindness from Ukrainian people. So I've done all the stats. I don't come, I am a Quaker, and we're told to test our truth. And Elizabeth Fry would have had no other. So I have dug into at least a decade of stats. I've now got the five Nordic countries, and I suspect they will say the same. Um, and I happen to have the transgender sexual offenders, and I've done that number crunching too. The point isn't a sex-segregated space, whether it be in a prison, a hospital, a public changing room, uh, a public toilet, especially a domestic violence refuge or a rape crisis centre. They are safe not only because you are keeping the male population out, they are safe because female adults do not sexually offend against female adults. In fact, of the 119 in 2021, um, there were zero sexual offences against adults. There were, of either sex, there were zero sexual offences against either boys or girls over 13. Yeah? All of the offences, all of them wrong, and the uh, comparison with the male sexual offenders, 13,000. Yeah, so 130 versus 13,000. Everybody can do that math. That's one in a hundred. Yeah, um, and that statistic is absolutely consistent. But the reason all those spaces are safe is one: you don't have the class of people who commit sexual offences, and two, because the class of people who definitely don't commit offences definitely don't commit them against adult. Uh, females. There are six cases and they are all consent by deception, which isn't right, but it's not violence. It's not fearing you will die. And I, aged 18, at Greenham Common, I was viciously attacked, I was nearly killed, and I can actually say that I taught a man consent while he was raping me in 1984. I'm autistic, you see, so my brain didn't freeze, it sped up. Sex, rape, consent. Sex, rape, consent. He doesn't have my consent, so it's rape. How do I say no when a judge says saying no means yes? And I figured it out. And so, and, and that whole action, which completely transformed my life, that took maybe 15 minutes. So uh, he certainly remembered it and he probably, like my GP said, never did it again um, because he understood what he was doing while he was doing it. That it wasn't his sexual fantasy, that in fact it was rape. And you know what he did? He stopped and he burst into tears. That's why I know that this just isn't safe. And on my honour for LGBT people, I may not remain silent, even if it might be a little bit more convenient. Thank you very much.